What's up, everyone? It is your girl, Jail Beauty 87 here, aka Grace. It's time to t check out all the things that are my favorites that I've tried so far in 2023. So, without further ado, let's get into it, girl. Start with um, the primers, then we're gonna do the color correctors, then we're gonna do the foundations and concealers. I got lip products, I got blushes, I got bronzers, I got highlighters, and it's me, so it takes forever. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, of course, y'all know I was gonna talk about this glow recipe, Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drop. I love this stuff so much. I feel like it has definitely helped with the texture on my face combined with using the actual original blur um, product they came out with in this um, strawberry line with the BHA. So, what I'll do is I'll use this as my primer in the daytime, and then when I go to bed at night, then I'll use that treatment to make sure. And I only try to do it like maybe twice. To three times a week to make sure that my skin is nice and you know smooth and i feel like it did an extra job of smoothing out my texture along with using that um shiny darden kit that y'all i gave y'all the video on when i first got it in um the sephora vib sale in april so I, I have been loving that alongside this to help with texture and i think this is a great primer so i definitely think you should check it out but girl i've been loving it okay so the second primer i have to talk about is the what is this the um Charlotte Tilbury <laughs> it's the um invisible UV flawless primer with broad spectrum SPF 50 sunscreen I love this because I'm a person who forgets to put on sunscreen but I usually wear makeup every day so what I'll do is when I get ready for work to put on my makeup and all that I will use this primer to make sure that um it helps get rid of my dark spots and make sure I have uh, SPF on because I hear SPF lasts for like two hours once you put it on so it takes me an hour to get ready and then it takes me an hour to get to work so while i'm in traffic for the hour with the sun in my face i don't have to worry about it i think i already told y'all this before in another video when i um in the complexion corner but you'll see this before you see that complexion corner most likely so i'm just peeing myself but um yeah i really like this primer plus it's really smooth and nice on the skin i had meant to buy this earlier but i forgot what happened i think i didn't get that much hype from it i had put it in my love list and went on my life and then i heard too much mouth saying that andrea renee had picked it out for her when they did a makeup swap where they buy each other's makeup at Sephora. So she ended up um, getting that. And I was just like, oh, okay. I was like, that reminded me. And it was right around sale too. So I was like, perfect. Thank you um, to Too Much Mouth Girl. Because I had forgot. But I had put it in my cart because it looked interesting. Next, I have the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. I really like this primer. I feel like I'm going to like this um, probably more. In the winter time, I'm going to have to mix it with a matte primer in order for it to work for me now because y'all know it's got to get hot outside and you know might be having a blot and whatnot so i'd rather just you know use a mattifying primer and powders and stuff like that to make sure we're controlling our oils but yeah i really really liked this primer when i did try it i was using it a little bit in the springtime and it was really nice and hydrating on the skin and gave a nice little cute little bit of a glow if you will not too much but it gave like a i'm a hydrated glow for plan type glow not like greasy like some things make you look when it's supposed to be glowy so i appreciated that um i thought it was awfully small though for how much it cost because i think this was like um close to 50 bucks or something like that so just keep that in mind she's a little bit high but i really like it i need those for later okay so next i have my dior forever 24 hour blurring matte primer i love this stuff i like this one way more than the gucci one so you won't see the gucci one in this one because i like this one so much better it comes out it's like a lotiony like um substance and it feels like more you're putting moisturizer on your face but it definitely does blur and it is a good um mattifying primer i don't know about the 24 hour claim because i haven't worn it that long but i think it did a good job from when i did wear it and i've really been enjoying this primer so um girl yes is the bright fix eye brightener in the shade honey mustard so i got the yellow tone shade because y'all know i love me a yellow um moment underneath the eye and i like to mix this in with um concealer sometimes if i feel like the concealer is a little bit too neutral and doesn't have enough of the yellow undertone that i'm looking for but it seems a little bit more on the beige -ish side i'll mix this product in but i just really love this product and the um because i feel like it brightens underneath the eye for real and then like you can put like even a, a concealer that's not as bright or it's one that matches your skin tone you'll still get a little brightness from it so sometimes i'll use it with those who like the ones that's a little too close to my skin tone because i like a little brighter of an under eye and it works out perfectly for me for like that so i've been using it on and off for like the last however long i've had it next i have the rare beauty um under eye highlighter or the under eye brightener it's in the shade medium deep i really like this i saw andrea renee put this, sorry andrea Montanalo put this in her um best of beauty so far in 2023 video as well i'm like i really like this formula and the funny thing is i didn't buy this when it first came out i was like hmm, i don't know i'm not gonna rush because 
I'm not too big on eye brighteners, but I found like two or three this year I actually like. So I'm like, mm, okay, maybe I should be more into it, especially because sometimes I don't get enough sleep and these can definitely help you girl in her time if need. But it has this um, interesting little metal like wall on it, if you will. And it picks up a nice amount of product, but the product is like thin and it blends out nicely. And sometimes I feel like I don't even need to use concealer underneath. I mean, I always do just because I mean I have so many, so we gonna use them. But sometimes I feel like I don't necessarily need to. Like I feel like I could put this on and that would suffice. And it's it's just a really great product. So if you're looking for an under eye brightener that's really thin, easy to blend out and um, looks nice underneath the eyes and doesn't, um, I don't feel like it necessarily creases, but you know each on but it's a great product and you should definitely try it out and y'all know rare beauty is more on the affordable side when it comes to these things not that fenty isn't either but it's like you might not like the fact that you have to squeeze out and then um put it on like a palette or put it on the back of your hand or put it on your hands to dab it into your eye in order to get the product out so the rare beauty is a great option for somebody who doesn't want to use their hands necessarily to put on the product lastly i have of course the light reflecting eye brightener so this is in the shade sunfire um i've really been enjoying this here so they say you're supposed to put creams on first and then you put a liquid on top so um since this is in a cream pot of course you would put it underneath the eyes first i use it um underneath the eyes before i put on like my foundation and whatnot and then i put the concealer on top of it and all that so it's been working for me nicely i want to compare it to the elf one though I now let's get into some of these foundations because there's actually a couple that don't have that much coverage so how about that so we're gonna start off with the i know this didn't come out this year but i bought it this year these are the fenty ease drop blurring skin tint in the shade 20 i've actually really been enjoying this and y'all know i don't like products like this but this actually gives a decent amount of coverage and it's really brightening it looks gorgeous on the skin so to me this doesn't look like a skin tint it's like the patrick it's like not as um full coverage as the patrick star one but it's like i want to say it's like a i guess a medium or a light a, a light medium coverage instead of a high medium coverage but I can make it work because I can just spot conceal and the finish on this is so gorgeous so I actually don't mind spot concealing so this is my type of skin tint I got one more type of skin tint that um I like and then you know the rest of them gonna be foundations because I mean this me to talking about the end of the day um and she got dark spots and hyperpigmentation to cover so skin tints ain't doing it unless they give at least medium coverage like Patrick Star and this one right here so this is the what is this the um bear with me blur blurring tint foundation i have the shade deep bronze 20 but i wear the shade deep gold in 19 but this was the only one they had in store that i could pick up and do the video for you all in a timely fashion so i went ahead and picked it up but i, I wear it in the shade deep gold in 19 but i feel like this should be fine for summer because it's one shade deeper and you know i'm gonna get a little darker in the summertime so that works this product is amazing if you all saw my video the coverage this was giving considering it's supposed to be a um I, there's a skin tint but it says tint foundation so i'm like is it supposed to be a skin tint or is it supposed to be a foundation i guess we go with foundation on this one but it does give a really nice medium coverage and it does have a matte finish and i do feel like it actually does a pretty decent job of blurring the skin so i was thoroughly impressed with this product and i don't really use drugstore stuff that often the only thing is for drugs so i feel like this is kind of high because i think this was like 20 bucks but nyx i feel like has always been going up and been kind of high in price for a while now so i'm just kind of like hmm next now to me i feel like this one is a honorable mention if you will because there's a dupe it's a dupe to um the makeup by mario foundation this um revlon skin it's what illuminating skin care foundation sorry illuminous skin care foundation i have the shade rich tan um 505 i um like it okay but the makeup by mario gives you more coverage and y'all know how i am about my coverage so to me this is more of an honorable mention because it's like if you want an affordable alternative to the makeup by mario foundation then i think this would be great for you and you can use coupons at um cvs they always give you coupons for like makeup and then they give you like specific coupons for like revlon and revlon has their own coupons i'm pretty sure i only paid like five six dollars for this and i think this foundation costs almost 20 bucks it was like 16.99 or 17.99 at cvs but by the time i got done i think i paid like five seven dollars so um you can get this down at a great deal i was supposed to do a cvs video on coupon a long time ago but they haven't had anything in my cvs that i felt like was worth it so that's why i didn't get y'all a video because i was like it's i don't have i have nothing to give because the cvs has nothing to give so tell them to hook up to CVS's in Chicago and then I can like 
do better. But like right now, they're not giving anything. Like you have to go to Alta and get stuff. Or you have to wait 100 years and then people forgot about the product or didn't care or just ordered it from Alta because they got tired of waiting. So that's why I didn't do that video. Random side note and ramble one. This one's just more of an honorable mention just because I think it's a good alternative if you don't want as much coverage as makeup by Mario. And it has a lot of the same ingredients and does a decent job. It's just that's for the girls who like the light coverage and the makeup by Mario. I feel like it's for the girls who want more medium to full coverage. And of course, the makeup by Mario one is in here. Now, just keep in mind for me, this is a mixer foundation. I don't necessarily like to wear this on its own. I know a lot of people like this wearing it on its own. I personally wasn't a fan of wearing it on its own. Uh, wearing it on its own. When I first tried it wearing it on its own, I thought it was okay. I thought it was decent. I thought it was nice. But then as other foundations started coming out in um, the new year, I was kind of like, this one uh, isn't as good as those. Like those have, um, they have easily been passed up. I just kind of was like, hmm. So, it's a good mixer foundation for me with other foundations that I um, struggle with or I feel like are a little bit too light or I feel like the formula might be a little bit too thick because this thins it out a bit. For example, I love to mix it with this Burberry Beyond Wear Perfecting Matte Foundation. I have the shade 120 Deep Warm. And the thing with this, as you can see, the color is a little bit too light, but when I mix the Makeup by Mario in, it looks fine. And then the formula of the Makeup by Mario thins it out a little bit too because I feel like this is a little thick in my personal opinion so I've really been liking combining both these together but that's the only way I'll wear it like because this is a little too light I'd have to wait till one time to wear this on its own and with this one I just don't like to wear it on its own so it's a great com it's a great combo putting these together but I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one just because I think there's one more shade darker than mine when it comes to this foundation. But I really like the formula and I think it really looks nice on the skin, especially combined with the makeup by Mario. I just wouldn't recommend it because I'm like, there's only one more shade after mine for any one of my skin tones. So it's just kind of like, mmm. But I think I still try it out for you all because, you know, I do like to try luxury complexion products. That's where I feel like luxury signs with their complexion products because their eyeshadows, we all know, is not it. But it's not made for fun colorful clowns as Angie would say like me or a happy clown like Angie would say so I you know it's not for me and that's okay oh speaking of eyes since I didn't say in the beginning what is actually on my eyes this is the um what's that palette called the Rick and Morty and Glam Light palette I did three looks with it believe it or not because I liked um the different color stories that they had and I wanted to use a good majority of them so I did three eye looks and this was the last eye look I did and then I decided to come film this video. So that's what's going on with the eyes if anyone cares. Because I'm going to forget to say. Things, please stop falling. I am not in the mood right now. Okay, so on to some other foundations. Next I have the, what is this, Juvia's Place I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. I've actually been really liking this if you can't tell. She's awfully thin along the sides. But I feel like there was a lot of air in this because it took a while for me to pump some out in order to get it out. It's It has a weird like banana candy smell to it I don't know what's going on with that but it's a really nice foundation um the only thing is you have to use like if you are oily combination person or just oily skin person like myself you're gonna have to use a mattifying powder with this foundation because otherwise it's gonna be a hot mess if you try to use the found the powder foundation that came out with this you're gonna look like an oily crazy mess so I found that you have to use mattifying um powder and then um we should be okay but this formula is really nice. It looks really nice on the skin. It does an excellent job. I just, I really like this. The only thing is for this Juvia's Place to be an affordable brand, to me this is expensive, but I think it's because they got the formula of this made in Italy. That's why it costs so much, because this is made in Italy. I don't remember if the powder was made in Italy, but I remember that this foundation in particular was made in Italy, so it is stunning, and I love it. And it's like $27, though, so I was like, is that really affordable? Like. $27 to me was a lot for a um, affordable brand. I don't know. Y'all can comment down below and tell me am I tripping though or no. The next one I have is the KVD Beauty Good Apple Full Coverage Serum Foundation. I have the shade Tan 074. Now this is a shade um, the Ange that um, Team of the Fancy Face wears oddly enough. So I thought it was weird that we could both wear the same shade. But when I bought the Good Apple, um, the Hydrating Balm one, I bought the shade 074. I usually wear the shade 074. So I thought it was weird that we could both wear the same shade. It did look a little light on me though. But y'all know um, Tina is lighter than I am. So it makes sense. But um, once I put all my stuff on, like it blended in. It looked like it matched me just fine. So I don't know what kind of witchcraft is in this where I can wear the same shade just Tina, but I'm just like, um, okay. I liked the formula on this. I, um, 
I really like this foundation. I thought it did a good job with controlling oils because this one is supposed to be geared for an oily combination skin, whereas the original one was supposed to be more for dry skin, which makes sense because of the like thick consistency of it. Like an oily skin person's pores will obviously be clogged and like, you know, the sebum and the oil will be coming out because it was quite a thick foundation. So I feel like with this one, it's not as thick. It's a little bit more on the thinner side and I feel like it does work better for oily skin or oily combination skin people. I don't know how the dry skin community feels you'd have to like watch somebody like Angie and one Angie has normal skin you have to watch somebody like Morgan Turner or like Karen Harris to find out about how the dry skin girls feel about this but I liked it okay I like to have to put in this video so you know there's that next I have the Laura Mercier real flawless weightless perfecting foundation I have the shade cardamom 5n2 I like this foundation okay it's just I mean, I really like the way the finish looks and all that, but I just feel like um, when it came to the shades toward the end that I'm on, it was lacking a little bit. But I was like, maybe it's because people don't really check for Laura Mercier other than the powder. So when she comes out with complexion stuff, she doesn't come out with as many shades because she's not expecting as many people to buy it because people kind of know her for like powder and that like secret brightening concealer. Because that's all I ever heard people talking about with her, like the secret brightening concealer and then like the you know Laura Mercier powder of course I don't really hear people talking about this I hear people talk about her blush from time to time but I don't hear them really talk about too much of anything else so I was like I just assume that's why she skipped on the shades toward the end because it was like I guess she felt like we weren't really checking for her other than the powder and I have only tried I think one of her foundations and it was okay it wasn't exceptional this is the best one I tried of the two so mm, I don't know girl but I thought it was a really nice foundation. It's just the colors are kind of lacking. Somebody said when they saw it on my face that it looked streaky. So I was like, ooh, honey. Next, I have the Guerlain Terracotta Foundation. Sorry, what is this? Healthy Glow Natural Perfection Foundation 24 Hour Wear No Transfer. I have the shade 7W. If y'all remember, I bought the shade that was one shade to dark so I actually should have got 6W but I bought 7W instead but it's okay because summer is coming and I will definitely be using this. I've actually been mixing those Westman Atelier drops in with this to get it to be a little lighter and a little thinner in consistency and then I put on a concealer and that works for me just fine so it's like I feel like I just wouldn't be able to wear this in the winter time unless I mix in a lighter foundation with it because it'll be too dark then. Like right now I can pull it off because it's spring, summer or whatever. When, once fall and like winter come, I'm gonna have to like put this one down to next year because it, otherwise it's just gonna be too dark. But the form on this is amazing. It does have a perfumey smell though, if I remember correctly. So just keep that in mind if you're buying this, it does have a perfume smell to it. But if you don't mind the perfume smell, I think it's a great product. It is a little pricey though, cause I think that one was like, over 50 bucks okay so the last foundation i have to talk about is this skin stick multi-use foundation stick from colored rain y'all y'all saw this video like when i put it on my face it matched me perfectly i like this i think i might like this more than the thread beauty one i think this one is 15 or 18 dollars and thread beauty one is a little bit more affordable i think it's like 11 but y'all this matched my skin perfectly when i put it on i couldn't tell why i had put it on it i wear the shade 510 ng if anyone cares which is neutral golden i believe but honey this foundation stick is amazing and I'm gonna have to order another one when they have a sale coming up on Black Friday because I feel like I'm definitely gonna run out of this because I like to use stick foundations when I'm in a rush trying to go to work and I don't feel like pumping out the stuff and doing all that. I'll just swipe, 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 swipe and rub it on and go because sometimes when the eyelids be too long, I be running late and behind on everything else. So these are perfect for times like that and I love this foundation. So yeah, 10 out of 10. That's one of my favorite affordable foundations I found this year along with the next one. If anyone cares, those are the two I would definitely recommend you get on the affordable end. Honey, they're giving and I'm living. Okay, the battery is blinking, so before I start on these concealers, let me go get another one before it dies because it's been blinking for at least the last two or three products and we can't be risking it. Girl. I'll be right back. Okay, so I only have three concealers, so this shouldn't take too long. I have the, what is it, the thread beauty cover it multi-use complexion fluid i have the shade 07 medium golden brown i feel like this one's a little too close to my skin tone for my liking i like the formula of it it's just the shade is a little too close to my skin tone like it doesn't give the brightening underneath the eye that i prefer so this is one of the ones i would mix that um the um the fenty in with because it's like i'm not feeling the way it's 
looking on its own i want a little bit more brightness to it and i'm not getting that with this or i might just use a lighter concealer because i do have some concealers i use just to like lighten up the front part of um the under eye like other people do so i would have to mix something with that but the formula on it is really nice and it's great for an affordable concealer now this one to me is more of an honorable mention because it's not giving a coverage eyes like, but this is one like I would mix with the one I just showed you, the 3 Beauty, because the color of this one is nice. It's just a really um, thin formula, which means I'm not going to get that much coverage, and y'all know I need coverage. That's my main concern. So I like this, and it's an honorable mention because it has a good formula, and I like the color to it. It's just more of the formula is a little too thin as far as being able to build up the coverage, so... This would be an honorable mention, not necessarily something I'm crazy about. I meant to bring the Givenchy as an honorable mention as well, but since, you know, um, it's six more months in this year, um, I'm going to just go ahead and um, save that for, like, the end of the year video because I have been using it on and off some more. I'm not necessarily crazy about the color from that one, so I usually mix in the Valentino with it because it's lighter than the Givenchy one. The last concealer I have to talk about is this Natasha Denona. What are these called again? High Glam Concealer Brightening and Hydrating Crease Proof Serum Concealer. I have the shades Y10 and Y12. My Y12 broke like y'all. It fell off the counter and I showed y'all like the crease part inside. It literally broke. You see, you'll see it in the complexion corner. I don't remember which one it was. I don't know if it's 16 or 17. Because I think we on 15 now, girl. I don't know. But anyway, um, I really like this concealer. I feel like she redeemed herself with this concealer. Because honey, that first one I tried, like I was like... You put it on and then you blend it out and you just blend it away to nothing. And I was the only person who felt that way because other people have been talking about how this one is so much better than that one. And it is because it's like, I don't know who approved that concealer, but whoever they were, I hope she fired them and promoted whoever approved this one. Because I, that first one, honey, it was not giving. I was not living. I was like, absolutely not. No. Just no. But, um... I really enjoyed this one. I'm glad my lighter shade didn't break. I was okay with the deeper one breaking because that was just the one um, I planned on using when I had ran out of this one, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, um, when I run out of um, that one, I guess I'll just put the top from this one on it or I'll move that top over here. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do because, like, the, it broke at the base right here inside where you twist it on and off. So this part was broken, like, inside here. So you can't even twist it back on and off. I don't know how that happened. But I am pissed about it because y'all know these concealers were not cheap. And the fact that I bought two shades to give you all options as far as colors went, I was quite pissed. But I'm going to use it up by the end of the year and then just, you know, have to be extra cautious when I pick that thing up. Because, honey, ain't nobody got money to be wasting like that. Like, Charlotte got me, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Natasha got me messed up. Okay, let's get on to some powders, girl. So I only have, I don't have that meaty powder right there. I only have like, well, I got like five powders. And I don't think if I should actually count one this year or not. Um, but I did buy this year. It was because of my girl, Bad Beauty, here on YouTube. So she was talking about this um, one size turn up the base found it vers versatile foundation powder. I have the shade Dark 4G. If you all remember, I think that's the shade of the foundation I'm wearing. So, of course, I would get the matching powder. And, honey, this gives you all the coverage. Like... If you have a foundation that doesn't give that much coverage, like it's more of a medium coverage, you want full coverage, put this on. You're going to be mad and it's going to give you coverage and blur really nicely. I love this product. But I know Stephanie wasn't going to steer me wrong when it came to a powder. So as soon as she said it, I was like, say less, Stephanie. We're just going to throw it in the cart. Say less. So I bought this during um, the sale in April. So I know it didn't come out this year, but I bought it this year. And I have been loving it and been using it quite a bit when I need um, a powder foundation when I don't feel like using the loose powder. But I have been using a loose powder quite a bit, so let me show you which one I've been using. It is the Max, uh, what is the Max Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur Weightless Loose Powder. I have the shade Dark. This is what she looks like. It comes with this little puff, as you can see, mine is dirty, and then it has like a little tube where you flip it up and press down. So let me pull it up so you can see what I'm talking about. So. It's one of those with like the net in it that's supposed to help. So what I do is I pat mine in the lid, which is why the top of my puff looks the way it does. Because I'll pat it in the lid and then I'll just pick it up from there as opposed to trying to, um, you know, trying to push into the net and pressure the five seconds. Because so like when we getting ready for work, anybody got time to be sitting there and pressing with that. So a lot of the times I'll just use like a pressed powder because I know I can press it in real quick and go. But when I don't use that, I've been loving this. Like, it does blur and it looks amazing on the skin. So, I am definitely glad I went ahead and grabbed this. The funny thing is, I've never tried the actual Studio Fix powder. I've only used the, um, the Mineralize Skin Finish 
um powder i've never used studio fix so now it makes me curious if i want to buy the press studio fix but it's like i wouldn't know what color to get because it doesn't come in the shades like that it comes in like in whatever or you know stuff like that or w whatever and i'm like i have no idea which one to pick so next this powder intrigued me it's like i know this brand's powder is amazing so that's why i just went ahead and bought the shade plus i was curious how the shade would look on some of my skin tone so i got the huda beauty um cherry blossom cake Y'all know this is like a pink powder or whatever. And y'all know the pink powder has been going viral and crazy. So I want to see how a pink powder would look on some of my skin tone. It actually looks pretty nice. It didn't look bad. Sometimes I'm mixing the yellow powder. So I'm mixing the original yellow powder and this one together. And make a nice little cocktail because it does mattify. And it still gives me a nice brightening effect. Or sometimes I'll just put this down in the middle of my face to brighten. And then like underneath my eyes I'll put the yellow one and call it a day. It all depends on how I'm feeling and what mood I am. But uh, this is a classic powder that everybody knows and loves and won't let you down so i'm just like yes give it to me so these last two i feel like you shouldn't be surprised about either now i don't remember if one of these came out this year or not if it did my bad but i have been using a lot this year still so this is the charlotte tilbury the airbrush brightening flawless finish complexion perfecting eye and face micro powder i have the shade tan deep so it's just this really like yellow bright banana powder if you will i laura mercier has a similar one too but i feel like hers is much more glittery than um this one is from charlotte i mean i can see little glitter sparkles in it but i like the color of charlotte's a little bit more um the one from um laura mercier looks more like um actual butter whereas i feel like this one um i don't know to me it doesn't give as much butter vibes as that makes sense and we know her powders are amazing so i needed to say i was going to love that powder last one i have to talk about of course is the nars what is this um soft matte advanced perfecting powder in the shade bay so the shade bay is the one that works best from underneath my eyes the yellow one this um is my type of yellow when it comes from underneath the eyes i feel like this looks gorgeous underneath the eyes and since it's mattifying it helps mattify the areas on my face where i get oils throughout the day so i'm definitely here for it it's a whole vibe i love this powder right here it is stunning and nars get a great job with this this is actually the first nars powder i've ever tried so it makes me curious to want to try some more now but my whole thing is like i feel like nars doesn't have many powders on their roster and it's like i don't want to try a loose one if they had like i think they have a pressed one in this color that works better for my skin tone so i might end up picking that up too just because i really um like this one enough to be able to pick up one that's my actual skin tone i know tina has that shade and i think she said she has one for her skin tone as well so i'm like i'm curious and kind of want to pick up one for my skin tone too but i'm like i don't know about all that like we'll have to wait and see because from what i remember that powder was not um that affordable because it's nars it was like more of the high-end price point i'm like you know i got a million powders as it is so it's like it's really a need I don't think so so i it had to be on a great deal for me to get because otherwise i'm just like mm. next we have the yummy skin what are these called it doesn't i'm i'm gonna just call it the yummy skin um blurring blush balm in the shade prima donna so i have the shade golden hour as well i don't use these that often but when i do um they give great pigmentation um y'all know which one i've been in love with recently because i I have done a video on it and showed y'all in the swatch party which one I'm obsessed with. I really like this one too though. So I wanted to just show it. I guess this would be considered more of an honorable mention because I don't reach for this as much as I reach for the other ones. But I feel like the other ones just look so good with the Dior blushes and I've been obsessed with those. So that's why. But this one is great. Um, the shade Golden Hour works pretty well too when I need it to go with like some of my orange blushes that fade away quickly. Because blush eats away at my skin because I have such oily skin. So having ones like this with this Upsilane in it definitely come in handy and there's a time and a place for when i be wanting to use pink blush like i have on pink blush right now but i didn't use that because like i said i was in a rush trying to get ready for the video because i wanted it to go up i wanted to film it today to make sure it went up tomorrow um next we have the makeup by mario soft pop plumping blush veils and the say berry punch so i love these blushes like i feel like they are so amazing they sheer out really nicely on the skin and then we put the powder on top it gives that extra oomph and pop to the blushes especially those like pigmented ones because they have something underneath that's a similar color to um give a pop to so i really really love these and i really love using these with the dior um uh, blushes 
But the form on this is really nice. It's easy. It goes on the skin nicely. It doesn't pick up the product underneath, which to me is a huge thing when it comes to products like this. Because sometimes if it's picking up my product, it's not worth it. And it's like I don't want to have to put it on with the cream on and then try to set around it with powder all the other areas of my face that I need to set all because the cream is going to pick up. On the powder so i appreciate stuff like this that doesn't do that but yeah y'all these dior blushes i love them like i am obsessed i am so glad they have colors that work for everybody's skin tone finally so the first two they did they was just working for one skin tone i mean if you use the cream blush underneath and like some of my skin tone i use cream blushes underneath mine and put them on top to make them work i would just use a deeper cream than i did um with the powder because i knew the powder was gonna be lighter and lighten up the cream underneath it or the cream would darken up the um, powder or something like that y'all i'm tired but um with these i don't have to do that like the sherry one is amazing i like to put this on top of the charlotte tilbury what is this matte cream because i feel like it does an excellent job showing it off and plus y'all know um i like to set my cream blushes even though this is supposed to be a matte but i still like to set them so i like to put this cherry one on top of here and i think it just looks stunning cherry is just the one i had sitting up here so that's why um I showed it with this and showed it with the other one, but I have colors to match all the ones I have from, what do you call them, um, Makeup by Mario, because y'all know I got like four of, I think, like the six shades they have, so I got the majority of the shades that I feel like would work for my skin tone, and I just put these two Dior blushes on top of them, and I've been obsessed. Now, y'all know you have to dig in the pan quite a bit to get these out. That's the only downside of these. I don't know if it's because of the way they press the, um, you know, the, um, y'all, I forgot about the setting powder from, um, Milk Makeup. So... This pole with the polar clips, matte setting spray. I ended up being really impressed with this after using a little bit while longer. When I first tried it, I didn't feel like it did the blurring thing. Like, but like I told y'all in a complexion corner, you have to press it in the skin in order to get it to do like the blurring thing. In my personal opinion, or that's the experience I had. But it looks nice on the skin. It does do a good job of mattifying it. I followed up with the Patrick Star one size one just to be safe, because y'all know um I got oily combination skin, and sister girl's not playing about any of that. But, you know, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, go get all my eyeshadow palettes together now so we can come and do this. Because I got like a whole bunch of stuff just sitting in the floor and I got to reprioritize life. So I'll be right back. Okay, girl? Okay. What do you call it? The, em the emblem on it or the um, their logo on it. But I feel like it takes a lot just to get these up. And that's what I don't necessarily love about it. But, you know, it's um, a great product. And it works great with these swap and other cream blushes underneath them. So I just work with it. The last cream blush I have to talk about are these ones from Alamar Cosmetics. So what shade is this? This is um, Let That Man Go or Let That Man Go, you know. So um, I don't think I've used this one yet, actually. Oh, yes, yeah, so I have. So this is like the orangey shade. But I really love the purple shade and the red shade the best when I want a more glowy version of the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Cherry shade I just showed you. I'll use like the red version of that and then I'll just put the Dior blush on top of that. So I have several um, cream blushes I like to use the Dior blushes with. And I use other blushes with them as well like these um, Gucci blushes. This is the shade Soft Red. I'm telling y'all who, who said this was red? Where is this red? This is coral. This is not red. I don't who lied and told them that. So I would like put that shade I just showed you, the let the man go, with um this soft red, because I feel like this is more of it. Now this is a lightly pigmented blush, just like the um Dior one, but I feel like you don't have to build this one up nearly as much as you have to build up the Dior one. So if you want one that's a little bit more pigmented and not as hard to pick up in the pan, I would say pick up the Gucci ones as opposed to the Dior ones. But I love the finish of the Dior ones on the face. So that's why I prefer the Dior ones over um the Gucci ones when it comes to um finish but i will say i still like um my gucci ones i love the shade warm berry like that's still my all-time favorite one and then i like um, what is it intense plum the new one that they just came out with this soft red one is okay and the pink one i have is okay but if i had to get rid of two i would get rid of that and the pink one and just keep the two warmer shades because i feel like with the formula of those and those shades it just works really nicely on my skin and i don't have to do as much work as i have to do with that soft red shade and with the um uh, pink shade the next blushes I have to talk about, of course, are these L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Blushes. I have all four of the shades. So this is shade, what is it? Fearless Coral and Daring Rosewood. So, honey, these blushes are amazing for drugstore. The only thing I will say is like they're expensive as hell because they like 
$15.99 and I'm like $16 for blush at the drugstore what are we doing why no stop don't do that so $16 is a lot but you can get them at also on a deal I haven't seen them at any of the Walmarts I went to I know Karen um Harris saw them at Walmart because I think she put video footage of it on her Instagram where she was at Walmart and she saw these blushes I haven't seen them at Walmart but in our flatters I only went to one Walmart so it might have been in some other Walmarts that I just didn't go. But, yeah, I haven't seen it in any of the Walmarts that I go to. So, I'm kind of, like, disappointed because I'm, like, I wanted to pick up the drugstore product from the drugstore. And I'm always saying that lately. Like, lately, you can't find any drugstore products at the drugstore. And if you do, it's, like, a super long time. And it's, like, you had to go to Ulta and pick it up in order to get it. And then sometimes it's not even in the Ulta store. Like, you literally have to buy it off Ulta's website. So, it's, like, are you really a drugstore product if I have to go to a online website and buy it that's not drugstore to me but you know whatever okay i'm done with that rant moving on to the next blush um so next i have the what is it the color fuse blush from house labs this is the shade lavender blonde if you all remember i swatched this alongside the what's the dragon fruit haze or is dragon fruit days or dragon fruit haze and they looked really similar i like to actually mix them together so y'all know I just I'll be mixing anything honey but I really like this shade I feel like it looks great on top of that um purple blush I talked about that comes from Alamar Cosmetics it just looks stunning because it's like you got that dark nice purple shade and then you have this nice like bright purple and it just makes a gorgeous purple shade on some of my skin tone so if you have that and you're planning on getting this blush baby combine it with that because honey it's giving I'm living and I love the formula on these I feel like it's really pigmented off the bat but it's not too pigmented to where you can't make an eye um, you can't jesus i look you can't um where you're gonna over blend it and you're gonna be stuck with a whole bunch of product on your face looking crazy like it blends out nicely and easily when you put it on the face so i really like that about it and i'm here for it is the ultra matte bronze powder from milk in the shade long beach they have four shades and this is the deepest shade and honey when i first tried this i was like because when I first saw it, I was like, I'm not going to rush out to buy that bronzer just because, you know, it's another bronzer and everybody came up with bronzer and then they only have four shades. So I was just kind of like, hmm, y'all know the Charlotte Tilbury Brown one is only like four shades of people when there are more people who would need a bronzer shade, but whatever. Uh, but I actually really love the formula on this. And this is what I use quite a bit. And y'all know I don't really like to use red-ish tone bronzers, but I still use this like even in like the fall in the winter y'all know i'm more like for spring and summer about bronzers this color but it's just that good and the formula on this is just so nice that i still like it and i can see like the circle of the pants starting to come through right here i know you all can't but from when i turn it at the angle where i'm looking at it, i can see the circle in the pan so i'm like should i get another one during the sale because i like it that much but i'm like i'm gonna calm down we're gonna be good we're not gonna do that even though it's 50 percent off and i'm tempted because i really like it that much but we're gonna be good and calm down i have another affordable product to talk about Oh, well, technically that one is affordable, so I don't know what I'm talking about another. I meant to say I have another L'Oreal product to talk about. So, y'all know they came out with these soft matte bronzers this year, if I remember correctly. I have the shade 500 Dark. Y'all, this bronzer is amazing. But just like the blush, this is $15.99, so I'm like, it's kind of high. But I feel like it's the same quality and formula as the Jaclyn Hill bronzer. So, if like, you didn't want to buy the Jaclyn Hill bronzer or you have the Jaclyn Hill bronzer, I feel like this is comparable to it so if you're not interested in purchasing some Jaclyn Hill and you want a nice bronzer because it's not like her bronzer is nice because her bronzer is just as nice as this one it's just this one's $15.99 oh this this blush and bronzer when you buy it from L'Oreal it's gonna have a fragrance to it I don't know what's up with them in fragrances I don't know if they're trying to make you feel like you're having a more luxurious experience because they put fragrances in it but I've noticed all of their products except for the concealer if I remember correctly from this line has fragrance in it so this bronzer has fragrance in it and so do those blushes that I showed you but honey this product is amazing and again you can get coupons and um get discounts if you buy it at your local CVS. Now, CVS doesn't have the blushes, but I did see that bronzer at CVS. So, if you want to, you know, use your um, CVS rewards from your care pass, and then um, you have some makeup coupons, you might be able to get it down to like four or five dollars. So, definitely look into that. Just saying. Of course, y'all know I couldn't go without putting my mother's bronzer in here. This is actually $23 right now, and I think they cost originally $38 when they came out, but she's having her 4th of July sale. So, you could get one on a steal if you want to. This is Divine Bronzer. And burnished honey so I bought the lighter of the two because there's one that's deeper than this one and I have that as well I feel like this is gonna be the one I use in the summertime though because there's the other one is more neutral and since this is more of a red tone one y'all know I'm not really big on red tones I 
plan on using this now i feel like it's a little bit lighter than the one from melt cosmetics but it still works on my skin pretty nicely i like to put like the nars cream bronzer underneath there and just put this on and then when i use the darker one i usually use the Danessa myers cream bronzer and then put it on top of that i always use a cream bronzer now and then put a um, powder on top of it just because you know i have so many cream products i had to try to the last i feel like couple of years that cream products have been coming popular so i had to you know make sure i use all the stuff in rotation next i have the elf halo glow beauty wand contour in the shade deep sorry in the shade tan deep so i have tan deep and i think there's one called deep dark don't quote me but i bought the shade tan deep and i feel like it's a decent color that's what the shade looks like it's um it's a good quality product. I wouldn't say it's just as good as Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like it's very, very nice though. Um, I like it better than the Milani one because the Milani one was um, my personal favorite from the drugstore until this one came out. I feel like this one is definitely better than the Milani one. I feel like they both came out with decent shade range too considering, you know, it's a drugstore product. But, you know, I ain't mad at them. It's a drugstore and I feel like they did a good job for it being a drugstore. So, I'm going to just leave that there. Um, next, I have this Victoria Beckham Contour Stylus Sculpt and Detail Wand. It doesn't say what, sh what shade is this. Does it say on the back? In the shade Granite. Y'all, this thing is amazing. It's so creamy and smooth. It reminds me of the Burberry stick that they had came out with a while ago that they discontinued. I loved that thing so much. I used up like two completely. That's how much I really liked it. But this has a gorgeous color to it. This one is deeper than the shade that... Um, Westman Atelier came out with in their line after they came out with another deep shade after that first shade they had was not hitting at all they came out with another shade and this is still deeper than that and this is Victoria Beckham's first relief and she's not even a makeup artist so it's like how you gonna let the posh spice outdo you and you supposed to be a world renowned makeup artist like what, what are we doing Westman what are we doing and if y'all saw she just came out with the bronzer for some of my skin tone finally because the one she had still wasn't that deep either so i'm anxious to get my hands on it when it comes to sephora i'm gonna get it but i'm not gonna rush out to get it from her website so whenever it comes y'all will see a video on it then but it's like 75 dollars and it's like have y'all seen how small it is because i think y'all have i did a video on the original one and i talked about how the cream wasn't dark enough and the powder wasn't dark enough and i guess other people agree with me so they were like oh let, let's bring out some more and it's like yeah you should have had like three shades to start off with at least what were we doing? Who was in charge? They need to be fired. Thanks. Uh, so I'm starting with the cream highlighters on this go round. So I have the Kosas Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Enhancer. Some people like to use this as highlighter on their face. I like to mix it in with foundation, but since it's a highlighty, glowy-ish product, I figured I could just stick it with the highlighters and it'd be fine. You're here, we're here, it's all here, and it's just it's going there, so it's fine. I have to show you recharge. This is sheer deep tan. I like to mix this in with foundation when I want that glow from within type of look. So I've actually mixed this in with the um, the Girl Line foundation I showed you earlier if I remember correctly. And I think it looked nice with it. It's really nice on the skin. It does give a glow from within underneath your foundation, especially if you have a matte one. So that way you can have that glow from within look. But you don't have to worry about looking oily and crazy because um, it's just a highlighter. I used to do this back in the day a lot. I would mix like liquid highlighters in with my foundation to get a glow from within because I have oily skin. And it's like I... I would have to make my face look matte, but it's like I still wanted that like kind of healthiest glow, if you will. So that was my trick till they came up with more healthier looking natural glow from within things like this. Because I used to use that thick, like glittery Kevin Aquan one and mix it in with my foundation in order to make it work for me. Because I was like, look, I want to be glowy like everybody else, but I don't want to be like oily, greasy, glowy from my skin being oily. I want, you know, I just want, I just want glow from within like everyone else. <laughs> Next, I have this Elf Halo Glow Beauty Wand. This is the highlighter one. I have the shade Liquid Gold. I think it's a pretty decent highlighter. With this one, I use it from time to time when I want an extra oomph when I have on a gold highlighter. So, for example, like, I put on this, uh, what is it called? The Guerlain Terracotta Luminizer in the shade One Warm Gold. And it's a subtle highlighter, so it gives a subtle glow from within. So, on the high points of my cheeks, I will put this on, buff it out, and then I'll put this on top. This has a very perfumey smell, by the way, if you're curious. So, this is a gorgeous highlighter. If you can see, I have started wearing off the name of it because I've been using it quite a bit. When I need a highlighter to go really quick and I don't feel like going through my colors, I'll either, like, reach for this one or reach for this gold one right here from Alamar Cosmetics. It's called La Playa. 
and it's just as you can see I've made a nice dip in that too it's a nice gold cream highlighter to me this is like a super shock shadow type vibe that's what it gives me when I um use it and that's the vibe that it has for me I really like it though because it's like again it's one of those that you put on the skin and then you can put like a nice pattern on top of it because it's not that it it stays sticky or anything like that I just like to put a pattern on top of it to amp it up plus y'all know I spray my face like three or four times to press the part again to make sure it lasts throughout the day so since I have to do it that way I usually like to press it in to make sure it um you know everything stays in but when you press it in quite a few times with the setting spray like it has a tendency to fade away because you're um packing the product in so that's why I like to use a couple of things to make sure I still have a decent amount of glow after I get done with all that um next I have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood glow got I'm sorry glow glide face architect this is the pillow talk one I like to mix this with the mesmerized highlighter from rare beauty to get a nice little like rose goldish vibe because that's a rose gold highlighter and then this is a rose gold highlighter so I like to mix them together and get a nice rose gold feel to the face so this is one I really like to use okay so all the, all the highlighters I only got some lip products and some eye products I know I've been talking forever y'all child I'm I'm tired of myself okay so I'm gonna try to hurry up with these I feel like I don't need to say too much about them because you know You've seen me with them earlier, and I don't think I talk too much when it comes to lip products. I'll start with the lip product that's on my lips, though. I have on the LYS lipsticks, the ones that came out this year. I, I think I have on the shade Dreamer. Yeah, I wear the shade. I have on the shade Dreamer right now, and I put a Makeup by Mario lip gloss on top. It's not the one we're gonna talk about in this video. It's the first set of lip glosses he came out with when he originally came out with his line those nice new sparkling ones that they have for like for 50% off from time to time on, on Sephora I really like those I've talked about those but those aren't like a new product I just wanted to put it on top but the only thing is to me the downside of this is it fades away too quickly in my personal opinion because it's so creamy I like the fact that it's creamy and emollient but at the same time I feel like it just fades away really quick so with this I always feel like I need to put a lip gloss on top because if I don't put a lip gloss on top I feel like it's just gonna fade away to nothing and like two hours later I'm gonna have to put something on so it doesn't last that long for me and that's downside of it for me but since I know I y'all know I'm a lip gloss queen anyway I just go ahead and put lip gloss on and go on my life next I have the y'all know these was gonna be here the lifter gloss bombs that they just Jesus <laughs> the lifter glosses from Maybelline that they just came out with because it's supposed to be a dupe for the gloss bomb I got all the shades and gave y'all a lip swatch video on um I did a lip swatch video on my TikTok if anybody cares about this I think I put one shade on in the video just so you all could see a color of one but and I think it was this one too gummy bear but I'm pretty sure there are five or six of these and I really like these glosses so I'm glad they added new additions on the only thing is these are limited editions so if you want to grab them you need to go ahead and go to Walmart's website or go to Amazon and pick them up I don't think they I'm sorry they finally had Ulta too so you can go there and grab them <clears throat> next I have the Fenty Beauty what are these called the Fenty Beauty Velvet Liquid Lipsticks in the shade sweetheart but my favorite shade is the mvp and then she had the mauve tone shade this is the more nudie tone shade if you all can see the color right there so it's just a nice nudie shade so i usually get like um a classic nude shade then i get a mauve shade because i know i live for a mauve moment and then i'll get like a i'll try to get like a fun color if i really like the form of, if i end up liking the form of later so i have three shades of those because she had 30 percent off sale and i went ahead and stacked them all up then Believe it or not, I've really been loving Manny's new lipstick. I have the shade um, Icon, so you press it like this, and then it pops down. And like the detail on the bullet alone is just giving. Now I will say he need to do better with them lip liners. Like the color of the lip liners is not giving at all. Like I need some deeper ones, Manny. What is going on here? Can y'all see? Yeah. So you see how the details on the bullet and how gorgeous it is. I love the amount of detail he put into these bullets, but I'm going to need you to put the same amount of detail in these lip liners and give me a darker one because I have his lip liner on now and I feel like it's not deep enough at all. But it was the one that's sitting on the counter so I just used it. Stop judging me. Um, next, I have one of these, what is this, the um, Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plumps. This is the shade Peachy Beige. I love this shade. I tried to get one other shade that was more of a pinky tone shade, but they had ran out of it. This is my type of lip color. It's kind of like the lip color I have on now that I made because I put on that new gloss from Makeup by Mario on top of the LYS lipstick and I made this color. So the color that's on my lips, this matches it perfectly. So this is, if I hadn't put had to put those two together, I could have just literally put this on and been 
perfect chef's kiss. The form of my nose is amazing. It looks like a wet, juicy lip gloss. And y'all know that's my type of vibe because I love me a lip gloss. So, honey, excitement, yes. Excitement, excitement, excitement. The last lip product I have to talk about is, of course, y'all know my moisture. What are these? Mar Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Colors was going to be in here. Y'all know I have just about every shade in these. I think it's only two or three shades I don't have and I didn't get them because it's not fall yet. So I don't need those yet. When fall comes, I will get them because they're darker and I need them. This is one of my favorite shades, Baby Coral. So I had to bring this one because I actually had it in my pocket to wear with the lip color I had had on early in the day when I was supposed to film this video yesterday. But I was like, honey, mm. This is my shade. I'm here for it. I'm living for it. I love it so much. It is gorgeous. I'm just like, yes, 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 yes. So I love all of these. I'm going to get the other shades once um, fall comes. So for like the sale in August as a four, I'm probably gonna grab the rest of those shades then because honey, I love them that much. I know people had feathering on them and separating on their lips. I personally didn't have that issue with any of the shades I bought, but I heard it's with that bright red shade Poppy, so I just stayed away and didn't buy that one since people said they were having that issue with it. Plus the Merge Kuju um, lip balm that I have, the other shade is a bright red corally shade, so I can just put like a red lip liner on and use that and it doesn't separate and do all that stuff that they claim the Makeup by Mario one does. So I'm like, I'm gonna just stick to that and leave that alone. Now let's get into the two eye products I have and then we'll get into the eyeshadow bag. So y'all know I'm obsessed with these eyeliners. I told y'all the best thing that came out of that box was these eyeliners. I eventually grew to like the palette, but the eyeliners are what got it for me. I was obsessed with the eyeliners. I love the eyeliners. I'm so glad to have these eyeliners. I actually used up a whole color. I used up the shade, um, Sector 001, y'all know the bright green fun looking one. Y'all, I have completely used it up. I like had to throw it away. I was in the middle of doing my eye look one day and it just like stopped on me. And I was like, no, no. So I dipped in as much as I could to get the other side done. And then I had to throw it away because it was gone, honey. She was gone. She retired. The other one I really like is the bluish purple shifting one. I wish she would make some neon ones because honey, let her make some neon ones. I feel like that would just, it would make my life having some neon, um, once because I love the formula of hers it's nice and smooth and then the brush doesn't have the issues that I have with the JD glow brushes so it's like if she made some neon colored ones just for the summertime I would be in love and I would have to have like five of every color because y'all know I'm in my neon liner moment of life so if Adept does that I will be living for it the last um eye product I have to talk about that isn't you know like an eyeshadow palette is these multi chromes from Colourpop. I was like, let me find out Colourpop out here making multi-chromes. Now, I don't know what's up with everybody making these itty-bitty multi -chromes. Like, why is it so tiny? These are, remind me of, like, the Natasha Denona one she came out with. Like, I loved her shade Scarborough. I love these shades, too. It's just like, why, why is everybody making such tiny ones and then charging you, like, $15 for this tiny bottle? Because I'm pretty sure these are, like, $13 and $15 a piece. It's like, why are you charging me $13 and $15 for this tiny bottle? I bought the set when it was, like, it was $48 and then the set had went on sale for like 30 something dollars and then I compared these to um, some other ones in my collection like I think I compared them to the Lethal Cosmetics ones and um, I think it was one other brand or it might have just been the Lethal Cosmetics ones I don't know but I really like these and am impressed with them so those all I have are products I had to talk about. But the battery is just really annoying with me. So I was like, look, girl, stop. So I got to go get another one. Jesus Christ, I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, so on to the eyeshadow palettes, girl. Okay, so we're going to start off with the Shroud Cosmetics, what is this, Moonfall palette. Now, I heard that these were originally singles that the brand came out with, and people asked her to make it into a palette. So she made it into a palette, and this is what we got of it. I think it's a stunning palette. I love the grunginess. I love that there's bright shimmers. I love that there's deep shimmers. I love the combination that this brand comes up with. Because I feel like they're one of those few brands that truly has unique color stories that nobody else comes up with and nobody else has. Like them and another brand I'm going to talk about in this video. I feel like they do a really good job of coming up with unique color stories that you don't see from a lot of brands. But it's cohesive and it still makes sense. Because some of them you look at it and it's like, this makes no sense. It just looks like you threw colors against a wall and decided to put them together in the palette. Because it looked somewhat aesthetically pleasing, but, you know, it has no substance or no purpose behind it. And I feel like they did a good job of giving substance to, you know, this palette. So, I love it. I've used it a few times. 
um one of my uh, makeup artist friends actually is trying to get his hands on it so i'm like yes that's how i know like the color story is fire because he was talking about all the different shades that he loved and i'm like yes honey i love it too so the next palette to talk about i'm just trying to get into the one-off palettes from brands that i want to talk about and then i'll do some um more but next i have the lamination cosmetics into the night palette y'all y'all if you want to do for the Pat McGrath Fellowship 3 palette, this is definitely it for you. It gives you fun, bright, colorful mattes in addition to a lot of the same similar tones that's in that palette. So I would definitely implore you, if you like colorful makeup like I do, to go ahead and get this one instead of the Pat McGrath one. Because, I mean, that gives you a little bit of color, but it's not going to give you the colorful mattes you're longing for. This one is just, it's everything. I'm here for it. I love it. I think I reach for this more than I do the Pat McGrath one because it gives you a similar effect. I did a video with my girl, Neon Loves Makeup. I try to remember to link it up above where... Actually, it's in the description box down below. I think I changed the link in my description box to just generate that video because y'all know I did so many collabs with Dion to try out who knows which one's actually in the description box. But I'm pretty sure I updated it with this one or at least in that um, video I did. So I'll try to remember to link it up above. I make no promises. But if you want to see this one alongside the Pat McGrath one, then definitely um, take a look. And I think I put that in the underrated versus overrated too. But I don't know if that's going up yet before this video has gone up. So give me a minute next i have the cleonid cosmetics deep sea treasures palette love this palette i think it is stunning i have used this at least three or four times and i know it's just all shimmer palette but i feel like it pairs so well with other palettes that i have that i want extra res reflective sparkly shimmers to or just a nice deep satin shimmer that blends nicely starting on a dark outer v moving forward with the eye look, I just feel like this palette is a great addition to my collection. And I'm so glad I have it. I always love whatever shimmers I get from this brand. It's just I don't like to buy single shadows because I know I won't reach for them. Like I still, even if it's just a palette of shimmers, I want it to be in a palette. So that's why I only own two things from this brand because they're in palette form. If they make more palettes, I will buy them. We know I will buy all the palettes. I have to go to the next brand whose palette I already bought and I already feel like I'm just going to be in love with it. This is the Cosmic Brushes Muse palette. Um... I know when I first tried the Serenity palette, I wasn't that crazy about it just because I had tried like two or three other blue-green purple palettes. So I feel like it just came out at the wrong time for me to really appreciate the formula. Because when I got the Muse palette, I was like, yes, I love it. I'm here for it. It's a vibe. Look at this color story. Honey, it's giving. I'm living. You hear me? It's giving and I am living. So I love the color story of this. I love the eye looks I've done with this. And I think it's just a stunning palette. I just, I can't with how gorgeous it is i'm here for it and i definitely can't wait to get the new one that they have and see if it beats out my vitality palette from um unearthly cosmetics because if y'all know that's one of my favorite unique fun rainbow palettes but i feel like um it might be beating it out so we'll see i don't know it's too early to tell because it hadn't even dropped at my doorstep yet the next palette i have to talk about shout out to my girl dion loves makeup honey she came to and let me have her palette she had received a PR from Nomad, the Royal Europe palette. Because if you all don't know, Dion has sensitive eyes, so she can't use pressed pigments. So the majority of this palette was pressed pigments. I think it was like only a couple of shades in here she could not use or she could use. So she just went ahead and gifted it to me and I got y'all the video up. And you all seem to really be responsive and liked it. So um, shout out to Dion Loves Makeup. You can use code Dion at Nomad because that's what code we use in this household. Thank you. Use code Dion for Nomad. But yeah, I love, love, love the color story of this. I like the fact that it's jewelry and grungy. But at the same time, you all these multi-chromes. I was mainly excited about the multi-chromes. I was buying it just to try the multi-chromes, okay? Because I know they had a couple in the Costa Rica palette, but it's like I want to try more. So the fact that it was literally just a whole row of nothing but that, I was loving and living for this palette. I still, I have used this palette about three or four times, and that's a big deal because y'all know us content creators, we have to like use it once or twice or use it for a certain period of time and then keep it moving on to the next thing to be able to review for you. So the fact that I've reached into it a few more times after like I did the initial review and gave y'all like two or three eyelets, I feel like it says everything that needs to be said. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're going to get to the brands I have two and three palettes from. So I just talked about, um, I believe I just talked about this brand. Oh, you can use Cold Cage Makeup at, um, I believe it's at, um, trial cosmetics and i know you can use karen's code at um cosmic brushes because i use karen's code to buy my new palette so i know that to be true but next on to blend bunny where you can use karen's code as well so you can use cage makeup at blend bunny you can use cage makeup at trial and you can use cage makeup at cosmic brushes okay 
but onto this lower palette and this troll quad y'all know i was gonna get this palette as soon as i saw the outer packaging i was like it better be blue green purple and of course it was the color story of my dreams it was blue green purple pink and you got a nice little smoky neutral a moment here so i was here for it i was living for it i was, i shouldn't say neutral more like cool tone but i was living for this entire palette as soon as i saw it this was what i was jealous of everybody that was on the pr list for blend bunny because y'all don't understand how badly i wanted this palette 20 minutes after she showed it i wanted it in my hands do you hear me 20 minutes after she showed this panel on instagram i was like where is it copy and paste it to my home i need this palette it is everything and i love it like this has to be my all-time favorite blend bunny palette it easily dethroned surge as soon as i saw it and got my hands on it, i was like uh surge who i've never met her she doesn't go here because war is just giving all of what i need okay and y'all know i love me a neon um color story and the pastels in there are cute but i was like no did this this one right here this one right here she, she's everything and i've used it about three or four times too so it's a big deal the troll squad it has gorgeous multi-chromes in it. As you can see, I have dipped into them quite a bit too with a nice little drove. I don't reach for this as much because I have a tendency to forget about it because it's so tiny. So it's not that I don't like it. It's just it's so tiny. But since I have made nice dents in it, I wanted to include it. Plus, these came out together. So just in case um, you wanted to get your hands on both of them and pair them together, I think I did. When I did the video, I'm pretty sure I used the shimmers in here. And then I just use the, the shimmers in here for the inner corner. And these were the lid shades so that you could get a look at both of them. But both of them are stunning. Both of them are lovely. I'm glad to have both of them on my collection. And yes, they are definitely a favorite. And you'll probably see them again at the end of the year just because I like them that much. So we're going to talk about them again. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so next I have these Huda Beauty Matte obsession palettes now i know y'all probably clowning me like girl you said you weren't gonna buy them you did a whole video about why you don't need them and i told you in that video because i make a lot of huda beauty content if they went on sale i would buy them so during the sephora sale they went 50 percent off so that's how i have them in my possession because i got both of them for the price of one and i was like that sounds like a good deal to me so then i bought them mind your business <laughs> and don't you be judging me it's Tina the Fancy Faces fault, okay? She was talking about how wonderful they are in, I think it was a haul video or a get ready with me. And I was like, okay, and they're on sale. Tina, say less. Tina, say less. You, you see she back here. She she influences me to make these horrible purchases and I will not take personal responsibility. It's Tina's fault. Thank you. But here's what both of them look like. Y'all know I was more obsessed in having this one. I don't really care. I didn't care about having this one too much. I mean, I made a nice look with it. But to me, this was kind of similar to the mini bronze palette from Natasha so it wasn't really a need it was just more of I wanted to see if the formula was going to be different from warm versus cool and the formula is the same in both and I like both just fine I leave them here in my grandma's house so I can have something newer to refer to y'all with so I've only used these I think I used this one more than I did this one I did this one once and I did this one a couple of times but I liked the formula in them enough to put it in here because I wanted to let you all know about the formula I know some people um were talking about how they didn't like the formula of these as much as other ones i didn't necessarily see a difference in them it seems like it was the good huda beauty formula for the quads as opposed to y'all know sometimes it's good quality sometimes it's bad quality it's like up in the air type situation i gave y'all a whole video about brands with inconsistent formulas i'll try to remember to um put it up there but i gave a whole dedicated video to huda and all those little palettes because like the bigger ones are fine it just seems to be when she gets the little ones throughout the year when she makes those it's a hit or it's a miss so i gave y'all a whole video on which ones were hits and which ones were misses so you wouldn't be caught up and you know buy something that you didn't really need because it wasn't that good okay um my battery got tired of me talking so i need to go get another one because we got we only got two more brands left though girl i swear it's only two more brands left i'll be right back okay y'all so I only got two brands left, like I said. So, of course, y'all know we got Odenzai or Odenzai. Because I believe that's how Angie said you're supposed to pronounce. So, I'll start with the newest collection. This is the Stone and Rock and Jewels and Gem collection. Or palettes, I should say. I forgot the name of the collection. I think it's called jo Jordan with an I. Um, so, this is it. If you like Gemini, but you want more fun colors and better shimmers then I would say go ahead and get this palette because I feel like the shimmers in here are better than the ones in the Gemini palette because the shimmers from Melt are just okay in my personal opinion so if you prefer this if you like this color story and you want some better shimmers I would say go ahead and get the inside one but if you already have the Gemini palette then I would say you don't need this palette unless you just want to add it to your collection which is your business it's not mine but I'll be trying to 
talk y'all about buying stuff sometimes because you know time is hard and price of stuff's going up and you know all that so it's like just just pull it out and remember girl just pull it out and remember <laughs> next we have the jewels and gem palette if i told anybody to get either one of them i would say most likely get this one because i feel like this is a more wearable and unique one that you get more of your money for because it's like it has this fun unique shade right here and this fun unique shade right here but it still has a lot of neutral mauve tones that you wear every day whereas i feel like with the green one it might not necessarily be considered as wearable if you will as this one is just i feel like why they came out with two but i like this one they had some jewelry as well that i actually like i really like the earring set that i bought I've worn it a couple of times. I haven't worn it that often though to see, you know, like if it's going to tarnish or anything of that nature. So I'd have to keep you updated on that. But uh, I really liked this collection. I like the colors of the palette. I know I did a whole video telling y'all not to get it, but that's because it just looks so similar to Gemini. I wanted to give you that option to see like if, you know, you already have some other green tone palettes, even if you have a couple of other palettes from them because if you all remember i showed you all the christmas deck the merry christmas palette has the greens at the top in it the same as stone and rock and then angie's palette the hella palette has greens and that's really similar as well so i didn't want you spending extra money that you didn't have to spend so i went ahead and did that next we have all three of these now all three of these have unique color stories to them we're gonna start off with betty jeans or betty beans palette the planet spirit this is probably one of my favorite ones because i feel like it pairs perfect with me hummingbird from tina the fancy faces palette so what it looks like on the inside and next to angie's palette i mean just to tina's palette it just looks stunning and does an excellent job and i have actually paired these with the other three collabs from the past which i thought was interesting that they each had color stories that paired together nicely so i have used all three of these at least two to three times which i'm happy about next we have lauren may beauty's first collab this is the sea talk palette I was so excited for her especially because this is the first time she ever got a collab. I'm not sure if Makeup Just For Fun has had a collab in the past. I think she did like a collab with Colourpop where they let her pick out stuff but I don't think she got to make on the actual palette. We all know this is Betty Jean's like what third or fourth collab. And it's not that I'm any less happy for her about it. It's just I was super excited because I feel like Lauren May Beauty has been out here for a while and like she didn't always get recognition that other um creators get so I was happy just like this I was happy for Tina that she got the opportunity to create and collab and make this palette so here's what it looks like I feel like it's a good alternative to the Cosmos palette from who is it um ABH as well because it has a lot of similar tones in it like if you block out the um I feel like if you block out the green shade at the top mainly like it gives off a lot of the vibes of that palette because it has those blues and it has those neutrals and I mean there's a pop of pink in there I don't remember if there's pink in the um ABH one or not but I told y'all to like go out and support Lauren instead of getting the ABH one because hers is 33 and I think the ABH one is like an extra 20 bucks so you can use I, I don't think you can use codes on a collection but even still it's only 30 bucks so you'd still have to pay abh 20 more bucks for it so i felt like lawrence was like a better investment if you will even though i hear the shimmers in that palette are really nice if it went 50 percent off i would get it but otherwise i don't plan on just going out of my way to get that palette next we have the flora palette and this is the one with makeup just for one um this is what it looks like on the inside it's giving um a i guess grungy gardenist sage with pop of purple vibe to me I like it just fine. I like to pair this with Angie's palette. Oh, and if I I forgot to say with Lauren's palette, I pair Annette's Makeup Corner to Giant Wolves with Tina's. I mean, with Betty Bean's palette, I put Hummingbird, and then with this one, I put Hella. So I love how you could combine each one of the palettes with a previous collab palette and get a stunning look out of it. Now I don't own the Judy palette. Y'all know it wasn't my color selection, like the warm red fiery color story and it looked kind of like toned down compared to what i like my makeup like as we can see it's extra and grungy and crazy today but i like to go for more colorful exciting stuff so that's why it didn't work for me but makeup just for fun's palette is perfect for somebody like me who likes everyday like who um likes more mauve tones for everyday neutrals so the mauves and the gray and the green in there work really nicely for me so that's why i really enjoy her palette last but certainly not least now y'all know i was gonna talk about this brand I'm always talking about their Nin Hydrant palette. Honey, y'all know the devil's gonna be in here, right? And surprisingly, I put the La Cienega, I hope I'm saying that right, palette in here. Cause when I first got it, I was disappointed, kinda like everybody else was. Like, 
this is what you gave us but like at the same time i appreciate the shimmers at the bottom and i appreciate the fact that for once she gave us lots of mattes now they're like more mattes on the neutral side so i wasn't excited about the mattes being neutral however it doesn't take away from the quality of the palette like i still gave y'all a really nice look with this palette in spite of me not necessarily being inspired or necessarily liking the fact that it was a whole bunch of neutral mattes but you know it turned out nice and I really like the shimmers in here so I figured I would go ahead and include it because for once she gave us a lot of mattes and that's something she rarely ever does. So I, I was trying to be grateful and appreciative. <laughs> Next I have the Arrow Inspire palette. Now I'm kind of hoping she brings this one back just because honey, y'all know this is my type of color story. See it's a green, blue, purple, pink situation going on here which we know I live for and love for and I love the fact that all the mattes are green but it's different variations of green like you got this nice pastel mint green you have this more kind of um I don't know what to call this green and then you have this more like pukey yellowish green and then you have like this super dark poopy um green brown situation so I feel like this is good neutral to um go with the good majority of the colors in here and then I felt like this was a nice outer V shade since the majority of the palette is blue green purple having this bluish green on the end I thought was great and then you have these fun inner corner shades or you could put these two as sorry you could put these as inner corner shades or you could put these as transition shades so I just liked the um color story of this as a whole so this it came out the glam light um Michaela palette um had came out and then something else so I was just like I felt like this was you know and that's why I felt like I didn't like the Serenity palette too much because I like, feel like so many of them came out at the same time. But I love this palette. I am living for this palette. I used this palette this week. That's how much I still love it. And gave y'all a gorgeous eye look that I was here for and thought it was a whole vibe. So y'all know I had to include this in my video. And last but certainly not least, the one I've been using the most. I think I've used this palette about three or four times since I got it. And I only did that video like a month ago. So that shows you my love for it right there. But y'all know I love a shimmery pastel moment. Like to me this is good alternatives to the Koi palette from Viseart because it's going to give you more sparkle and glitter than that one does. So if you were interested, I definitely would say get your hands on this palette. She's stunning. She's giving. I'm living for this color story. Like, if I did not have the Viseart palette and I had to choose between the Viseart palette and this palette, I would easily pick this palette. I did show you all the Viseart palette for comparison, but I definitely like this one a whole lot better. I like the different textures. I like the, the high shine and glitter shimmers. But I also like the foil, wet looking metallic shimmers that are on the lid. And how all of them shift and transition into different colors once you put them on the lid. So this is probably... I'm tied between this and Arrow Inspired that um ended up dethroning Ninhydra. But Ninhydra has been dethroned. Um, and if you all did not know that Hydra was actually the first palette I bought from Adept. I saw my girl Karen Harris with the plain Jane. I was like, that's cute. That's nice. But then I saw Ninhydra and, and y'all know I am a purple palette connoisseur as I love to say. <laughs> so I had to get my hands on it. And that's what made me love the brand and buy everything else ever since. So those are all the um, palettes I had to talk about, I believe. Hold on, let me check and see. I feel like that was it. If there are any more, I will add on to the end of this. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember you all are diamonds. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be blessed, girl. Bye.